My name is Jerome Altman. I am the director of the Exodus Drum and Bugle Corps. Uh, one of the greatest things that I found is that uh, music is always an encouragement and uh, uplifting, and it gives the kids a chance to do great things in the community. Safe place to go outside and play. 
and I heard the gentleman say he was afraid to come over here. I'm not afraid of my community, but I'm very watchful because I've lived here for so long. Of being around people you know. I know that they're capable of doing and everything, but I'm not afraid. That's different from people who don't live here to say that they're afraid. I'm afraid to go up in Lincoln Park or, or uh, uh, Logan Square or uh, uh, Lake View. That's where I'm afraid to go now because that's where it seems like most of the crime is happening at. It's not necessarily all about West and South Side anymore. During the time of being in office, there, there have been movement under my leadership by leaps and bounds. And it hasn't been, it was only by the grace of God. And if you want to talk about history, I have to tell you a little about my history so you can see where my future is going. And that's what our kids is missing also. They got to know their past so they know where they're going in the future. Oh yeah. So let me take you a little bit to our past so you know that. It's not about where we are today. It's about the fight that people have died for for us to get to where we are today. Oh, yeah. It's about the struggle that our parents and our grandparents, great grandparents, our forefathers put up with before now. Oh, yeah. So if we're not going to tell our children about the struggle that we had, how can we relate to them today about what they're going through? And our children right now, many of them are, are suffering from emotional stress. They're stressed out. And if you don't take time to learn what they're stressed out and being able to communicate with them, we could end up having them being suicidal. We could have them have a mental breakdown. We could have them getting out here doing activities they shouldn't, they shouldn't be doing. We have to hold ourselves accountable first in order to help them. I ain't told me to introduce myself, but I'm telling you about what I think in life because I would waste my time and I don't uh, hold back on the punches. I, I can give them and I can take them at the same time because it makes me stronger. Yeah. When we move from, we're talking about black history, <coughs> if our children know that, at one time we didn't know about Burger King, McDonald's, none of that food. We was learning how to cook at home. We learn how to make things happen. But being healthy food for our bodies. We learn how to drink Kool-Aid and water, <laughs> not pop. That's right. Right. Not energy drinks. We have to look at water being the substance for the body. And our children say, I don't like no water. But what do you do to make sure that your child doing the right thing for their health? Because if they don't drink water, then you're going to pay for it later on in life. Let me just say, um, through the work, just during the pandemic, I'll, I'll bring, you, bring you forward. Last four years, while we were locked down, I wasn't able to move around, none of us was, but I was able to work with computers and I was able to get on Zoom meetings, and we finished up our Joint Public Safety Training Academy, and then we put our boys and girls club next to us. Let me tell you, we talk about we don't like the police, but when do we, and we, we I understand that, but our kids, those are good paying jobs, and when they come in our neighborhood, we need people looking like us. Why ain't nobody looking like us? because our kids are not trying to go into that profession. And then we have everybody else around trying to protect us, and we act like we can't protect ourselves. See? So we want our children to be able to be what they can't see, which is why that Boys and Girls Club is right there next to the Public Safety Academy. They're going to see the firemen. 
the paramedics, the policemen, there and going in and how they look at talking to them, interacting with them. We want, we want to change this mentality that all of them are bad because they're human beings just like you and I. And in every profession, we're going to find something wrong with it. And there's somebody who's not doing what they should do. Next to the Boys and Girls Club, we have two restaurants. Hovers, Grovers, the hamburger place, come to the west side of Chicago. Uh, oh. Clovers. You don't have to go to the suburbs, you don't have to go out south, you don't have to go into area. You can come in to get more hamburger in your own community. Butterburger. And then we can have a sit-down restaurant, a breakfast place, peaches. Peach. Peaches is currently over on the south side of Martin Luther King Drive on 35th Street. They're moving right here. These are two black-owned restaurants. That's great. Two black-owned restaurants as we celebrate black history. Now, we're going to get the workforce to go in there with those. And we want the young people to be able to interact so that they can be able to learn how to be entrepreneurs themselves. And we have Amazon. Amazon is coming to the community. Yes, they are. In spite of what we've been heard, they, they, they built a facility on Division and Carson. The facility is there, but and we heard Amazon is restructuring their whole program throughout the country. What they want to do now is to put in robotics, robots, so that they can do the heavy lifting things that people were complaining about when I talk about restructuring. And then we want to still have 250 from the community to be able to work there. Those jobs started out at 17 or 18 dollars an hour. After three months time, I work with Amazon. If you want to go get your college degree, they'll pay for you to go to college. All right. That's what young people say. Education. Continue to get your education as long as you get it free. And then we got Starbucks coming to get the message. Also on North Avenue in Cicero, we have a Starbucks that's being built there, along with Five Below. I know you've been going to the suburbs and the brick yard. The five of them will be right here in our neighborhood. So we can touch. And if you can see this building right here, I know you've heard of the Larry State Bank. Yeah. Right here in front of us. Where they're going to be able to put this ham in there. A blues club, or have a bank. And then have mixed use housing. Affordable and uh, some affordable and uh, um, affordable and mixed, mixed income so that you can be able to uh, keep our community. Low income, that's what I want. Yeah. Affordable and low income, so we can keep us in our neighborhood. And we have PCC Wellness Center up on Lake Street. They are expanding their facility. So we can have more care where people are going to have to go out in the neighborhood. They have it right in the neighborhood. And tomorrow I'll be cutting a ribbon on the um, healthcare facility in the 4700 block on Chicago Avenue. Where you see, that's going to help with our open air district. People who have a, a mental illness case can go in to that facility and get help. Where we won't have to be looking for places to go. We have them in our community. Look, I'm excited about the work that I'm doing in the neighborhood. And I give it my all. 110. 110% every day because I love the community and I had, we all raise our hand and we swear that we're going to protect the people. That's right. We're going to serve the people. I had to do that 23 years ago and I keep that, that honor in my heart every day as I go out because I promise that I would do this and I'm going to be true to it in my word because if I don't, I got the Lord watching me, so He sees and knows everything. And uh, I don't want to be, I don't want the whooping from Him, and you shouldn't want it either when you don't do what He tells you to do. So I'm gonna keep doing what He tells me to do, and that's to keep working out here to serve His people. You know, I don't take the job lightly because I have people's life in my hand every day. Every day I move, and when I say I don't have, I don't tell people that I don't have time to talk to them. I'm going to hear what they got to say because I don't know what it is they're going to tell me. Right. So first of all, 
My time is your time, and I'm here. I need your help February the 28th. If you hit 37 Ward, I need you to punch 52 so I can keep doing the work that I do. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the facility that they have on Madison and Central, are you also involved with that? That's, that's uh, in the Ottoman Tower Service Ward, 29th Ward, but I support the project. Okay. So, uh, do, you, do you, your office, and I think we have somebody here from the Darfield Park Advisory Council. I'm also a vice president of the Darfield Park Advisory Council. We have Gina uh, Jamerson here. She's also part of the Darfield Park Advisory Council, and I know they have that. Uh, West Side Rising and uh, a lot of other groups that's collaborative do the Austin community collaborate with other uh, communities that's right around it? And if, if so, do you have any uh, suggestions on what we can do to help, you know, bridge the gap with all of us just, you know, so someone don't feel like if they walk from Austin into Darfield area or go into Humboldt Park, there's a thread of people we can do to make it feel safe. You know, I learned that during the, uh, um, negotiating and working on the Public Safety Academy that communities are separated but people are not. Wards are separated but people are not. And yes, we do need to collaborate so in working with some of the groups in the uh, Garfield Park area, the West Humboldt Park area, we are going to have to start building these relationships with Austin area. It's not about, it's the west side now, baby. It's all about the west side, I've got to tell you. It's the whole entire west side. It's not just about one war anymore because all our people are suffering. And if I don't help my brother over here, then I don't need him pushing back on me over here. We need to see how we, it, this God's world and this enough for all of us. And we need to just try to put it together and make it happen. So I have started, because I service uh, part of Humble Park area, Austin area, part of the Belmont Craigan area, I have to bring people together. In order for to do Chicago Avenue, and they're doing a development down Chicago Avenue. It's coming from Austin, it's going all the way to Kansas. We're gonna have new streets, we're gonna have Bleach, bleaches out on the outside where we can sit in, the bike lanes, the trees planted, and gateways to our community. Other people have gateway where they, you gonna know you coming in, uh, Soul City Quarter, where you gonna have signs for everything black folks, area. And that's what's coming to our neighborhood. City is working on it now, and if you see these flyers, you should go to some of the meetings and be a part of shaping what Chicago Avenue is going to look like in our community. We have to have, uh, it's our plan, it's our time. I look at it, it's our time now. And uh, we need to capitalize on that. So, uh, in, in your Garfield Park, just to mention, CTA is getting ready to move their headquarters, and that's over on Lake and Pulaski, which is going to be in the Garfield Park area. And that's in my ward. So I would look forward to working along with you to bring that $240 million project over here to the third day. Amen. Amen. So there you have it. Right as you can see, we have our own alderman of this ward. Uh, tell them the board you're again. And then, uh, ward 37. That's 37. My name is Emma Mitz, 37th Ward Alderman. My office is located at 4924 West Chicago Avenue. My phone number is 773-379-0960. You can email me at emma, E-M-M-A dot mits, M-I-T-T-S, at cityschicago.org. Thank you very much, Emma Miss. We appreciate you coming out here, spending this time with us today. Uh, well, uh, I don't know if we have, I don't know if we want to start asking questions right now. You can probably ask some of them. Because we have a lot of guests today, and uh, you can either write or you can right here, you can talk to her. That's one of the good things about her coming out and talking to you personally, because she's right here where you can voice your opinion. And right now, we're on the internet and other stuff, so certain things we may need out there. We don't know what's going on, but we're live right now. So if you have a question, your argument is right here in your face. Awesome. All right, thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. And can we have the next guest come up?
black man? How do you have it where the black, the, the, the one who scores the highest at six years old is a black male? The black boy scored highest at six years old than any other race, but yet one out of one out of ten graduate approximately from high school. We got the biggest prison system in the world, the worst school system in the world, and we keep saying, if the kid, I'm going to say this to you, I love what the man was saying about food, and but the kids right now, all they want is a quality education to guarantee them. They don't want to be transgender. They do not want to be abused. They do not want to be sexualized. They do not want pedophiles, and that's what it is, LGBTQ, P, P, for pedophilia. They do not want to be transgender. They don't want to be grown. They don't want to know how to use sex toys in class. They want to know how to read in phonics, but I am a school teacher. They took the phonics out. They put in Common Core curriculum, just in case you all don't know. When they put in the Common Core curriculum, the suicide for ages uh, 10 and under tripled in the school system. 10 and over went up to 76% suicide because they were giving them Marxism, socialism, and communism curriculum. It's even worse than that now. Now they're grooming them. The, the city of Chicago is united with the hospital to purchase sex toys and teach and train the children through Planned Parenthood how to use sex toys instead of getting the education. So please, please, don't ever tell me after you watch Tell Who, Tell a lie and come back with that maneuver in my face telling me how black kids don't want to be fighting. They don't want to be, you're a liar and the truth ain't in you. You're ignorant and not saying you're stupid, just you're not aware. You don't even know this happened, but it's happening and it's been happening. My babies in school, they want an education. They want to learn. They want someone to love them. The black boys don't want to be on the corner. If in whatever school they're in, there's a, about a 70% chance that the black boy is going to be the first one they suspend. Not because he's doing wrong, but because the teller what? Yeah. Has, has stereotyped him as being bad because they're envious and they're jealous of him. And the, according to the Bible, where there's jealousy, there is confusion, and every evil work. So we're trying to figure out, well, what have we, have we get like this? You've been watching too much teller what? And then you've been, it makes you hate your own seed. Listen to me, I live up the street. I ain't scared to come in my community for what? I know my black boys, I train my black boys. My black boys are some of the sweetest boys on this planet. My mother was on the CTA going downtown at 80 something. She said the only one stood up with all the other races on the bus, the only one stood up and gave her a seat was the one that the teller lie is telling you is a villain. So with that, I'm going to throw my mic because I feel like throwing it. I'm going to crash the plane, and I'm going to let the next person minister. And I wish you all would stand up and represent and protect our children. God's word say protect and defend them. And we, as a black people my age, y'all screwed up. We messed up bad. We messed up. We need to ask our sons in prison, our daughters, our children in the worst school system in the world with the biggest prison system in the world and the only city that has a child prison. We need to repent and say, God, forgive us for dropping the ball and listen to tell a lie, tell a lie. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, so can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, where your organization is located, how to get in touch with you, so if anybody has any questions, they can uh, well, reach you, out to you. You can contact me through um, Jerome. He has my contact information. So there you have it. If you want to contact some of these individuals that are here at the forum, always you're invited to come down on Wednesdays. Uh, we're here from 12 until 3 o'clock, and you can get a chance to meet, greet, and talk to people that make a difference in your community. You're the missing link to helping change our community issues. So we'll be right back. Thank you very much for uh, getting up here and letting us know what you're doing and how you're helping change our community.